Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, community, PancakeSwap community. Welcome again to our special Q2 Roadmap AMA session. I'm Tefran, PancakeSwap's community manager, and I'm super thrilled to have you here again. It's not uh, too much time since we did this for the the last announcement for VP4, but it's always uh, it feels always nice to be here. Today, we are super excited to dive into the roadmap for this quarter of the year. Can you believe it? it's already April? My brain is still stuck on celebrating New Year's, to be honest. Around the week for the next Bitcoin halving, uh, we have just presented PancakeSwap before last month at ETH London. It's quite a lot to process for my little brain and to be super happy about. And of course, uh, I'm not alone. Uh, here with me are some of the more brilliant minds that the PancakeSwap kitchen has behind all these new, new features, the ones that I've just told and the ones that maybe some of them are going to leak or not. You, I, I know you want leaks, but let's see, let's see how it goes. First, I would like to introduce, as always, Jeff Mochi, PancakeSwap's head chef who wants to give you a warm welcome to you and another introduction of this space. Hi, Mochi. Hey, thanks, friend. Hey, hey, community. Welcome to the second quarter roadmap AMA. And as always, thanks for taking the time to come chat with us. So I want to ask if uh, any of you were surprised by some of the products that we launched last quarter. Uh, PancakeSwap now has a new RPG game we have very nice graphics, uh, and that's also, you know, not just for PancakeSwap, but also for our NFT community. And very recently, uh, we've also launched an options platform. So now on PancakeSwap, you can join in on all the DGEN Wall Street bets type of fun by trading options on ETH and the Arb Arbitrum token. So Q2 is shaping up to be you know, more and more of these improvements, uh, as well as the continued development of V4, which Fran mentioned, we recently announced at ETH London. So I hope all of you are excited. And let's dive into today's AMA and answer any of the burning questions you might have. Thanks, Mochi. Thanks. Uh, yeah, option is quite quite a, a, a nice thing. I, I think you will hear Chef Momo at some at some moments answering some questions. He is one of the brilliant, brilliant minds behind that. And we were just having a meeting, uh, our weekly meeting, some some hours before, and it was like my six in the morning, and it was <laughs> learning and remembering my old times in the traditional market um, operating options, and I was saying. No way this is happening in the in the crypto environment and also in PancakeSwap. So I'm so glad to, to be here and be part of this <laughs> feature release. Okay, let's let's start. Uh, there are there are some really good questions of, for this roadmap. Remember, guys, this is um, these AMAs are a perfect opportunity to discuss our plans, explore upcoming features, and address all the questions you may have. So don't be shy and use the comment sections. If you are watching this on YouTube, use the reply. If you are in watching this on Twitter, uh, AKA X, uh, to drop your questions and we will um, bring this all up at the end of the pre-collected questions. And of course, uh, for the ones who are, are missing this, uh, we are going to prepare a recap with all the summarized important info that we can discuss us today. So stop chit chatting, Fran, and let's drop the first question and then the introduce of one of the other members. So Giosa, if you are there, is Quest uh, Web3 uh, platform a product that can generate revenue or it's just for PancakeSwap's own use? Thanks, friend. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, just to cover this question, uh, at the start, the quest will be used to host the PancakeSwap campaigns itself. And also, yeah, I think it's all about creating fun quests for the users. 
And then this will actually allow the kitchen to understand how our users would like to engage with the Quest platform. So we'll take these learnings and moving forward, we will probably expand this product to feature more partners, but at the start, definitely focusing on PancakeSwap. Nice, nice. Thank you, Seth. Okay, le let's continue. Um, there is an overhaul on the PancakeSwap website. Uh, I think community wants to know what has changed in terms of UI and UX. Yeah, so we are reworking the PancakeSwap site to make things more accessible while also accommodating the new products. So as you guys know, uh, PancakeSwap uh, in the recent quarters have been pushing up new product after new product. And so on the UI UX front, we recently updated the V cake staking page so that all cake stakers can now see the three components of APR. First, staking APR, where uh, cake emissions are directed, to revenue sharing APR, uh, which comes from the trading fees of the protocol. And lastly, vote incentive rewards. And this, uh, you will have to, as a V cake staker, go to one of our partner uh, sites where if you vote on a gauge uh, where you know, other token incentives have been provided, you will, as a V cake staker, be able to earn additional incentives from there. So this is now all easily visible from the staking page and is a UI UX improvement. Additionally, we're also on a, another UI update that makes providing liquidity on PancakeSwap more intuitive and to adapt to the fact that PancakeSwap is now very much multi-chain. So in the future, uh, the UI UX should allow users to see all pools and all farms across all chains very easily on a single page. Nice. I'm super uh, annoying saying always that the future is multi-chain and this, what are you telling us? It's kind of the essence of this. and. Yeah, it sounds amazing that we are going to be able at some point to to have all in one place. OK, I think the other one, uh, it's for Ban, but uh, he told us he couldn't make it. So we miss you, Ban. We hope uh, we hope you can um, join us in the next AMA. So I think Mochi is going to cover uh, Ban's questions. And the next one says something like, does cross-chain be cake? mean the possibility of locking cake on other chains? Yeah, so I'll take this for Bun. Uh, cross-chain VE cake is more about bringing uh, VE cake benefits cross-chain. So rather than uh, allowing the cake to be locked uh, on the other chains. So benefits like B cake, like IFO's I cake, can via this uh, cross-chain uh, mechanism now be used on chains that are not BNB chain. So uh, how this works is that users will still lock kick on BSC and will still generate VE kick on BSC, but the balance of VE kick will now be visible on all other chains and all the benefits of VE kick will then be available on all the other chains. Nice, nice, nice. Empowering governance through our VE cake ecosystem. Love it. Okay, next one I think it's will be for band two. And it's more like technical. It's it seems like it's me asking how the things work. And the question is like how will sorry for my pronunciation to up and limit order work? And if it will generate revenue for pancake swap and if it would be cost effective for traders. Yep. So the uh, latest uh, TWAP or what is known as a time weighted average price and limit feature are welcome updates to what Bun calls our ancient limit order V2, uh, which only supports limit orders on our V2 liquidity. So the new version will support all pancake swap tax liquidity types. Uh, so with features like TWAP, users can now break up very large trades into smaller ones to minimize price impacts or slippage and apply advanced trading strategies like dollar cost averaging, uh, which is DCA. 
And so all this will help users save on trading costs and execution slippage. And more importantly, to save on time, so you don't have to you know, always be on PancakeSwap's uh, UI and clicking uh, swap multiple times. As for revenue, uh, currently at this stage, we don't have any additional fee, but uh, you know, we are focused on getting things right with the ops team for now. But definitely in the not so distant future, this can be something that generates revenue for the protocol. Okay, okay. Great answer. Thank you. Thank you, Mochi. I think the, the next one is uh, Giosa again. And is there some plan to, <laughs> it's addition question. Is there some plan to better APRs in simple staking beside multi-chain? <laughs> yeah, thanks, friend. There's always a plan for better APRs, but uh, yeah, we are currently exploring other ways to provide uh, these simple staking solutions that increase the APR. Yeah, while also adding liquid staking pairs for users who are looking for liquid staking. So one possible way to provide higher APRs is to feature tokens from chains outside of BNB. So for example, what we have right now is uh, Polkadot and Solana, which are which might provide higher APR this time. And we also look to add more tokens from other chains to our, our simple staking product. Thanks. Thanks, Giosa. Okay, next one. Um, oh, I think I, yeah. Sorry, I, I think I, I missed one in the middle. It says something like, okay, this, this question one leaks, that's for sure. Uh, and it says something like, what is the new trading venue for the DEX? Uh, it's uh, something like, could be PCXX, more source of liquidity, or, and how it going to impact on the revenue and the cake. I see that uh, a lot of users are asking about revenue. Yeah, so we, we see liquidity getting more and more transparent these days with many new aggregation protocols. So as PancakeSwap, our goal has always been to work hard on new products that provide users with a better trading experience. So whether this is more liquidity, a wider range of tokens, or simply the convenience of trading any tokens you want. We're not overly concerned about affecting our revenue stream, and we believe as long as we have a solid product, there are many ways to extract benefits and to apply them back to cake holders who are staked with VV cake. Thank you. Thank you for covering it, Mochi. Okay, I think it's time to introduce again uh, a kitchen member. Hi, Momo. Are you there? How are you doing? Hey, hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I know you are super, super busy with all features and on the deployment of V4. So I have some questions for you. First one would be, what are the next steps for PancakeSwap before? Sure. So uh, we're working uh, on V4 to optimize the code base further to benefit from more gas savings and also finalizing on few features such as including on-chain farming. So um, yeah, so this will be followed by uh, the code freeze and extensive audit this quarter. Uh, we'll also focus on developing hook, hook ecosystem uh, our users could benefit from after the launch. And this will involve building a developer community and execution of the developer grant program. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the next steps. Perfect. And um, I think the, the next one will push you a little bit more and um, saying some leaks. So we will just have uh, developer things or something to use in this quarter. Yeah, so uh, this quarter will be focused on building. And like I mentioned, we're refining the code base further and putting together all of the supporting components, such as the front end and the routing and, and much more. So V4 will be available uh, for the users uh, in early Q3. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately for now, it, it's more of 
about developers uh, this quarter. Nice, nice. And uh, sorry for the users being so push. <laughs> Thanks, Momo. Thank you a lot. Thanks, Jan. Okay, next one. Let me see. Oh, I think I can answer next one. And uh, the question says something like, if we are going to participate in some physical events in this queue, and yeah, I have I have a, a, an answer for that. Like, if you have shown our before event in East London, I hope you had, or at least see the the photos and the the following tweets and the recap video. I I'm sure you saw the bunny head jumping around here and there. I hope you had a lot of fans with our chefs and got some <laughs> nice photos with the, the bunny head. But yeah, the short answer would be yes. We are looking into some events for this Q2. As always, we are only looking into events that relate to our audience. And so far, we have seen some interesting ones in Europe. That will be the, the leak. So if you have any events that you would like uh, us to attend, uh, don't be shy and please shout out by DM or in Twitter or the social you prefer. Send, send a message to us and let us know which event we should go. Um, coming back to Mochi, I think, uh, and talking a little bit about affiliates, I have some questions for you. Is there anything, uh, any other affiliate uh, in the pipeline besides Mancake? Yeah, I understand uh, why the community is curious. So we are speaking to a number of teams about deploying different uh, on de about de deploying pancakes from on different chains. However, I think at this point, there is no timeline yet. Uh, a firm one to the next affiliate proposal uh, that you guys see with uh, Mancake. So, you know, as uh, I, I put up a governance discussion in the forum uh, when we first started this idea, we at the bottom, I, I did say that we hope to work with three affiliate teams this year. I think given the number of teams, we I still believe that uh, by the end of this year, we will be able to have three very good teams uh, forking pancakes from on different chains. But uh, at this moment, there is no timeline to the next one. Okay, okay, got it, got it. And talking about that, um, when Mancake is going to start working? Sure. So uh, I think for a detailed uh, timeline, please refer to the voting proposal. The timelines are uh, written in there. Uh, at the high level, what the proposal says is that by the end of Q2, main kick will be up on mental and deployed. And what I can share is that the team is already in the process of uh, making this happen. So uh, I still believe that Q2 will be when main kick will be uh, deployed on properly and up and running on mental. Great, great, great. I'm so excited about seeing that working. OK, uh, we are just, uh, we have one more question uh, from our pro collective question that you guys have sent to us uh, these days. We are going to pass to the live part after that question. So I remind you, if you have any concern, anything that you want to know, this is the time to drop it in the comment sections. If you are in YouTube, on, on the reply part, if you are looking this uh, through Twitter. So let us know if you have any question and we will answer it at the end. So last question from this section. And I think it's this question, I saw it a lot of times, not only in the forum, but in the community and uh, on this core, I saw it in a, every different places. What's your opinion about the regulation problem we are seeing in the market? And of course, the other question is if PancakeSwap can be affected of this. Sure. So uh, for everyone in the community, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen uh, the recent uh, SEC regulations that are coming to DeFi. So we are very aware of the developments and we are also closely following uh, how regulation might affect DeFi in the future. But uh, you know, that being said, at the core AMM level, 
the smart contracts that have been deployed by the kitchen are first not upgradable and two they are not permissioned and so Pancakes was v2 v3 and the upcoming v4 amms will always continue on at the smart contract level regardless of how future regulations might develop as you guys know once smart contracts uh, especially immutable ones are deployed on the blockchain there's really nothing that can stop the smart contract from operating since code is law within uh, our crypto space and so um, while regular regulatory pressures are ramping up uh, you know we we do believe that uh, the ethos of uh, DeFi and DEXs will continue to run and uh, whatever smart contracts that we develop will continue to follow these ethos Thanks. Thanks for clarify and let us be more relaxed and chill about this. Thank you. Thank you much a lot. I think it's a pretty much asked question and it, I think that a lot of people wanted to know. And yeah, let's let's see if uh, I see a question about this. Just drop it in the comments. It's the same that uh, Mochi has answered yet. So let's start to the, um, the live part. I see one question here. It's, I don't know, I'm going to add to you to the stage in case anyone wants to take it. And one user says that want <laughs> you mochi, but anyone can answer to help to, to answer which type of tokens will be listed on the liquidity book pools on PancakeSwap before. Yeah, I can take this one. So, uh, ideally, there's no specific preference to listing the type of pairs, uh, be it pegged assets or non-pegged pairs uh, on the liquidity book pools, uh, because the liquidity book has its own benefits as compared to CLMM, and it it has offers those benefits to uh, both types of pairs. So, uh, we we want to be open and. Uh, uh, in house uh, in the kitchen we don't have any preferences and uh, to which type of tokens because it has its own benefit for both pegged and non pegged pairs nice thanks momo thank you a lot okay i see there is another one and it's about ifos uh, the guys is uh, the guy are interested in why we are not having new ifos since the last kpi which was a c a community ifo i think mochi can you tell us a little bit about this sure uh let me give a little bit of background to the launchpad landscape in the last kind of couple of months maybe last half a year so in the first uh, place i think uh, last year we made an internal decision that we would only want to launch uh, projects of a very, very high quality and that we wouldn't uh, you know, uh, lower our standards uh, for any project that we think uh, wasn't good enough for the community. So that's one reason why uh, IFOs and CIFOs have reduced in frequency. But uh, additionally, in the last um, four to five months, I think uh, another two things have occurred in the background that I think the community might might be interested to, to know. So the first, I think, is something that everybody is uh, seeing a lot, which is there are a lot of protocols that are launching uh, via airdrops rather than launch pads. So um, you can see, uh, you know, I can name a, a few that are very uh, recent, for example, Athena, the protocol behind the USDE stablecoin, all uh, protocols such as EtherFi, which are uh, launched with, I think, Binance Launch Pool. Uh, so these are protocols that are well funded and they are mostly launching uh, via just giving tokens out to users who have participated in their protocol. And so the IFO is traditionally a fundraising uh, process for projects. And what we've seen is that there are a lot of projects that are not in need of funds and are going straight for airdrops to users to launch their pro uh, project and their token. And so uh, a number of these projects that we have 
um, approached, uh, we, 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 you know, after discussions with them, we do realize that they may not require fundraising. And so uh, that, that's one uh, restriction, I think, that um, is, is uh, you know, kind of reducing the, the number of quality uh, iPhones that, are, that we are seeing. As you guys know, uh, a lot of the projects that don't require fundraising are very good projects to begin with, which is why they have no shortage of funds. And therefore, uh, fundraising is not really, you know, uh, a major concern for them. Uh, another uh, kind of more, I, I would say, less uh, well-known maybe uh, phenomenon that, that we are seeing also is that there are a lot of projects that are doing uh, a lot of private round fundraisings at very uh, good valuations as well. So again, uh, the IFO is competing with. Uh, venture capital type fundings where projects are choosing, you know, either uh, do we take a VC round or do we take a, our token public and, uh, you know, do an IFO to launch uh, the project. So again, uh, IFOs, I think, in this phase of the bull market is also competing with a lot of uh, VCs that ha are well funded. And so uh, projects that are not in a rush to launch their token may not want to uh, you know, do an IFO because doing an IFO means that you are launching your token and they may also prefer the route of going uh, with more fundraising in the private market. So all in all, there are more, I would say that there are more sources of capital uh, for projects and there are also projects that don't require funding uh, in this cycle. And so we are seeing less uh, good prospects for IFOs. And what we don't want to do is to lower the bar uh, to, you know, hit a certain number of IFOs. We, what we want to do is to ensure that IFOs that we are launching are of good quality for the community before we proceed with one. So I think all these things considered are reducing the number of uh, IFOs that we are doing. So as you can see with CakePie, while this is one of the only ones we did, uh, it is a very successful IFO, uh, even though it's branded as a CIFO. And so what we are hoping to do is to replicate, uh, you know, a few more of these uh, cake pie type IFOs uh, for the for our user base. Okay, that was quite a complete answer. Thanks, thank you a lot, Mochi. Uh, okay, I I see some of some other questions. This one says that we have already there are already developed hooks for Uniswap before. How hard it would be to reveal them on PancakeSwap before? Sure, I'll I'll take this one. So, even though the architecture of PancakeSwap v4 is different than Uniswap v4, um, the good part is that it's very easy to migrate the hooks specifically for the CLMM pool type. Uh, if you have already developed that for Uniswap. Uh, for the other pool type, uh, which currently includes the liquidity book AMM right now, uh, there will be much more changes required. But for both of these pool types, they've already uh, shared example hooks uh, in our GitHub repo. So please visit the GitHub repo to uh, uh, make, make more sure of it. Thanks. Thanks, Momo. I super appreciate your your answers. Okay, I have. I'm seeing another one. Uh, this this one is is tough, as Karib says, but I think it would be nice to hear the answer. And the question says um, mostly about what's the opinion about Sec uh, versus Uniswap. And again, I I you already answered this, but uh, the question says, do you think this could have an impact on PancakeSwap? And of course, if yes, uh, if you can measure it. Sure, uh, I'll just share some frank op opinions on this. So first of all, I think like uh, how the Uniswap team has responded uh, on their blog and Twitter, we are also fairly disappointed with uh, this news that uh, Uniswap was served a Wells notice from the SEC. So we do think that uh, you know DeFi and DEXs in general are providing a very good platform, uh, which is you know allowing projects and uh, tokens to be uh, listed permissionlessly 
uh, to users that want to access them. So uh, I think the general sentiment is that we are also fairly disappointed that uh, that you know an enforcement action is coming. But to your quest, your first question about uh, SEC's situation with Uniswap. So what we understand now is that they have been served a Wells notice, and a Wells notice is just an uh, I guess like like a sort of um, early notice that something will be uh, enforced against. Uh, Uniswap. So at this point, what the SEC is specifically complaining about uh, with Uniswap is still not public knowledge. Um, and so there are a number of things that the SEC may 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 say, and uh, we don't know what that might be. So at this point, uh, we I'll have to reserve any comments until we know what uh, the SEC's formal complaints are. And uh, I do believe that will be made public. Uh, you know following the Wells notice that was recently issued. Um, as to your second question about whether there could be an impact on us, I think uh, I briefly shared you know, that the smart contracts will continue to persist uh, in a permissionless manner. Uh, I think what we would do as best as possible uh, is to adapt to uh, changing circumstances. Of course, uh, the smart contracts that are deployed that can't be changed, uh, that, it, that will just remain so, that's, that's not something that the kitchen will be able to change. Uh, regardless of what the SEC thinks, but you know we, we are here to protect uh, cake token holders. We are here to protect our liquidity providers. We are here to protect our traders as much as possible. So while we don't know what the formal complaints are, yet we will strive to do everything we can to make sure that PancakeSwap continues to navigate these uh, interesting times. Uh, and so the last question: What measures uh, have we taken to mitigate such a situation in the future? Uh, I assume the question is about what we might do in the future to to mitigate any uh, issues. So I think uh, as a starter, we also still stand with the principle that DeFi is permissionless and should uh, should not be you know managed by kind of any central uh, entity. So uh, we would we would be we would stand you know um, ready to change any mechanisms that uh, PancakeSoft has developed over the years if. The eventual complaint uh, does show that you know the kitchen needs to adjust the way uh, certain things about PancakeSwap is is run, especially if it's not related to our permissionless uh, immutable smart contracts. Uh, but you know we we would like to see also what is going to be the issue that is raised by the SEC before we do anything. Uh, I I think that would be the wisest move for PancakeSwap at this moment. So hope that gives you a bit more clarity on how the kitchen is thinking about this. Thank you, Mochi. Thank you a lot. I I see the user already. Thank you. Thanks for giving your frank uh, opinion about it. I super share it. It's uh, a disappointment uh, news, but I, I think DeFi will remain. And as Uniswap, uh, finalized it, it's they're communicated uh, they are here to build i will extend this to us uh, we are here to build and build is what we are going to do let's see if there there is any other question we can highlight before before ending thanks all for being here thank you chefs for taking your time on a friday night i think for a lot of people uh, for being here with the users so let's see um Okay, I think if there is Okay, I think uh, we are pretty much <laughs> Okay, I think there are some uh, tech questions that not super easy to to answer here, maybe in regarding a stable swap, it's easier to to read the docs maybe uh, since uh, it's 
more easy to understand, we can say. So if I'm not seeing any other questions, check in also, also Twitter. So I think we can, <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> I will highlight the, the comment about being too technical. Uh, I know how it feels, <laughs> but I'm the, on the other side, the guy who doesn't really know too much about technical. I miss Van, who is also always helping me to understand these concepts. If you see our DMs are more like, hey, Van, can you explain me this, this and that? And the guy's tiredness explained me all of that. Okay. Uh, it's already for now. Mochi want to say something before we wrap up, or any other chefs want to say something? It's it's the time. I I talk a lot. Okay, I'll just uh, quickly wrap up. So uh, first of all, Saul, if you have any issues with the SDK uh, after reading the documentation, feel free to raise it in our Telegram group and. Uh, one of our ambassadors will be able to forward the question to our developers and get you an answer for that. Uh, but generally to the community, thank you all for coming. Uh, these are very interesting times and PancakeSwap, as always in each quarter, continues to build. Uh, I think this time around the roadmap is fairly clear. Uh, V4 is the priority for this quarter along with some of the other upgrades that we have mentioned in the roadmap. So once again, uh, stay tuned. Uh, many announcements will be coming out this quarter on the things that we are working on. And thanks everyone for participating on the Friday uh, night or Friday afternoon, wherever you're from. So uh, yeah, have a good weekend and once again, thanks for coming. Thanks, Machi. Thank you a lot for being here and thanks all the community. As always, you can wait for the AMA recap in case you want to read it, in case you want to pass it to someone who uh, unfortunately missed it. Thank you, Momo. Thank you, Giosa. Thank you, all of you out there. Let's see when we can gather again. And if you do a meetup, please come to us to, to meet the, your favorite chefs and have a nice weekend, rest of the day, night, and see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.